Right, it's just something a little different for me. Definitely the most modern rifle I own in the collection. But I took the plunge and I bought one. I got it from DMB Militaria. Obviously it's a Styrorg. All of you know that. This is definitely an early one. So I've done some research. Um, a couple of things that give it away is the two-tone. Um, so the green is the green that went for in the later rifles. And this sort of dull brown or off brown is uh, indicative of a really early one. Clearly the fact that it's still got the 1.5 optical scope versus the Picatinny rails makes it early. Definitely a U service rifle. If you look at all the uh, scratches and dings and scrapes and knocks. Something else that makes it uh, an early gun is that this should have two sides to eject left or right. It's only got the one. This was something I'd done in 1980 evidently. So this was a pre-1980 gun and they came in in 1978. So it could have been the first batch of uh, 80,000 I believe procured in 1978. So this moves up and down. Sorry, my wife just calling me down in the background. So yeah, the uh, forward grip goes up and down. Try and do it, yeah, there we go. And it's just spring pressure, you just pull it down and up across, job done. The optical side is very cool. Really worn. And this actually moves. Leaving the bolt to the rear. You can see straight down to the mag wheel. Really not a bad little spec. Don't mind my kids. There we go. So for me, this really represents. Um, <laughs> this really represents 20th century firearms design. So it definitely has a place in my collection. Um, most of you know I collect World War II, early post-war. I love Czech stuff. Um, don't own anything past about 1960. But this, yeah, yeah, now is now the latest gun in my collection. But it really does epitomise. Uh, 20th century design you know it's a short gun it's a 20 inch barrel uh, obviously the barrel comes down to here it's a ballpup design which means the trigger housings forward of the action um, and it just makes for a really compact design it's actually a very comfortable rifle to hold you know to manipulate to change a magazine with to hold and to be comfortable with it's actually a really really ergonomic gun um, I spent a little bit of time in basic training with the uh, infantry and I trained on the L8 D5A2 um, I didn't pass out, I didn't serve as such, but I did spend some time in basic training. Um, and uh, let me tell you, I've always been a fan of ball pups. Uh, not a lot of people are. I am, personally. Um, they're really, really comfortable when you're marching. Um, they're good when you're crawling across the ground. They've got a really good um, centre of balance. Um, I, you know, the weight of the rifle sort of sits around here, where it balances. Um, they are easy to shoulder. And genuinely... A really, really decent gun. But yeah, for me, anything Cold War interests me. This is really, it is quite late Cold War for me, but early enough to still um, have a good point of reference in my collection. Um, I'm after a bayonet for this. Evidently, they're quite scarce. Can't find one anywhere. Um, a sling, but it'd have to be a worn-in sling to match the patina of the uh, rifle itself. But yeah, really, really good gun. DMB, I took the plunge. Thanks guys for the deal, as ever. Genuinely really, really pleased with this. Um, represents something late Cold War, but at the same time, really, really pivotal point in firearms transition, where anything, everything went from metal and wood to plastic and polymer, optical built-in sights, um, and that's pretty much the standard of the way things have gone going forward. But this really did start the trend. And uh, what a good example, early, Pre-1980. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thanks for watching, guys. Any questions? Comment. Thank you.